Welcome into my lair. That's right. Welcome to the Still Grizzly channel. I love me some RTS style games, as I grew up playing them and always find new ones fascinating and engaging. One that has kept my constant interest as it is always changing is They Are Billions. Starting out, this game is daunting and takes hours to master. I'm here to help you out with some beginner tips that should make it easier for you to play this game. First tip, number one, numero uno. If you find yourself repeating levels, and not making it further. Don't be afraid to lower the difficulty. I found myself on many missions struggling with tactics and the resolution most of the times is lowering the difficulty as sometimes the zombies can be just so overwhelming as the game states they are billions. If you do see it as too hard start on an easier mode so you can familiarize yourself with the mechanics and figure out what your next step may be. Tip number two, yep, numero dos. Scout with rangers, kill with your soldiers. Starting each random map, you have four rangers and one soldier. You need to take those rangers and explore your surrounding area. Have them start to clear out zombies, which is another tactic I'll go into further later. Sometimes there are random resources laying around that you can have your rangers sneak in and grab. This will help starting out to get that little boost you may need. While you do this, you can build better equipment, expand your settlement as you push your rangers out to explore more and more of the area. But don't delve too deep, as you may awaken the bal Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean harder zombies. Now, for the soldier, I typically leave near the main compound or starting area, as when you first start, any one zombie could sneak in and destroy your buildings. The soldiers can take on multiple zombies as they hit harder and have higher HP. This also helps as he can take down runners, which are quicker zombies, that may well, um, you know, run in. However, the soldier does create a lot of noise, so keeping them near the home base at the start is a good idea. Tip 3. Clear out the zombies early. There are a few reasons to clear out the zombies nearby. One, it's always good to have a more open area with less reasons to worry. Two, any zombie you don't see could potentially destroy your settlement. Yep, all it takes is one zombie. Three, when the zombie raids happen, which I will explain more on later, they pick up those staggered zombies and say, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> no, but really, they pull in any stragglers, and next thing you know, the force that was going to overwhelm you is now even larger than it was before. Tip four. Don't overexpand yet. Expanding your colony is key to winning that this game. While yes, you don't have a ton of resources at the start and you won't see yourself expanding super fast super early, I recommend placing walls at strategic points. Don't block yourself in as some areas you may have placed those walls could have been used for building homes or for farming resources. While it's important to build walls, don't build them all over the place preventing you from expanding. Try in the beginning following behind your rangers that are scouting by placing tesla towers to expand out. Since you won't have enough resources for walls yet, use those rangers to help defend by placing them on patrol, which has them loop back and forth in a certain range killing anything that comes near them. This way you can expand your colony out, letting you have more room and of course to survive those zombies. Tip 5. Mares will help your colony. As your colony expands, you'll get the choice of 1 to 2 people to help you. They are called mares, and they will help out when you reach certain points. When your colony reaches 30 colonists, 200 colonists, 600 colonists, and 1200 colonists. Mares can provide you with additional units, stronger attacks, sight, range to specific units, buildings to build, or help with resource production. Since this is all random, there are some good and some bad. For example, you're maxed out on wood and you're getting a mare that has 150 more wood, it wouldn't be the best option for you. I tend to think a mare giving out resources isn't always that good as you'll have capped resources and don't want them to go to waste unless you have multiple warehouses which expand your resources. Picking a mare who gives you additional units or maybe a technology boost like farms will help out a ton at the start of your playthrough. Tip 6. Resource Management Resources are how you expand, how you make more units, and how you just make it in the game in general. You have a couple things that you can help to expand your resources, like a warehouse which gives you additional 50 units per resource and over 2,000 more gold to mess with. When you start a game you want to start building hunters and fishermen cottages. It depends on where you start as each map is different. You could be near water or more trees. Build your tents, have your rangers scout while you expand your resources. I found with hunter cottages, you can place those inside your area instead of always buy forest grounds. 
This helps if you have not researched the farm yet and need more food but can't expand out. Sawmill is always helpful. I recommend trying to get at least 10 wood on the first one. That way if you have any issues you'll always have that 10 wood coming in. Trust me, it helps. While exploring you see ore and iron. Ore is generally nearby to your starting location while iron is typically further out. You'll need to build Tesla towers to expand out and get to them. Ore is more important first as you need it to build other buildings, whereas iron is more used for units early in the game. Once you have these built up, it's just a process of building more units, resources, and expanding out as you clear the zombies. Tip 7. Use pause. This is the biggest help when you're being attacked from multiple sides or seeing a lot going on and need a moment to process. Use that pause button. It can help you to stop and take a moment to see the damage that is happening and move your units to a correct location or build more walls to prevent further zombie damage. I find that I tend to forget this is an option till I'm sweating nervously as I try to defend my settlement from waves of zombie hordes. Just be aware that while you're paused, there will be no resources gained and your units won't move. This means you can tell them where to go and once you unpause, they will move to that destination, but not while paused. Tip 8. Build layers of walls. Walls are important, and I know earlier I said don't over build walls to close yourself in, but it's important to defend your town. It's what helps defend your town, gives your units a chance to rain fire down on the zombies, lets you expand your town out safely. Building layers of walls when you have that chance, sometimes you get focused on another area, and instead of zombies eating up your village, it's better to place some wall choke points. To have a couple layer of walls, this means say you keep expanding like we talked before, don't section yourself off, you have to keep moving out of the circle you're in. You'll either run out of housing, resources, or not enough manpower. When this happens, place new Tesla towers and expand out, building new areas with more walls around them. That way, when the zombie raids do come, you'll have multiple layers of defense. Tip 9. You'll need troops. Lots of them. I stated it's good to scout with your rangers, then use them to help defend your expansion of your colony. However, you'll find there are a lot of zombies out there, and you'll need more than your four rangers and one soldier to help defend yourself through this map. To do this, I recommend that you build that soldier center and push out troops. Rangers are weak, but in mass they can help to clear out large groups of zombies. This can help when you're waiting to find some iron to open up those soldiers so you can build better units. To help clear later in the game, I like to start with 5 soldiers and start to clear out big sections of zombies near your base. This is also a good way to help expand out your base. When you find those zombie raids coming in, it's good to have plenty of units to fend them off. Also, veteran units help out a ton. Each unit, as they kill, scores a little XP. You could say, till they become a veteran, which means they become gold-plated and can't die. <laughs> well, they can still die. Everyone seems to die in this game. The trick is keeping them alive. Having those veteran units will help us they shoot faster, hit harder, and sometimes have better health. Tip 10. Be ready for those zombie raids. Last but not least, you gotta be ready for the raids. I've given you the tools to help build your colony and to help expand out. But besides the zombies on the map, you'll get raids that are timed throughout your scenario. These happen at different days depending on the difficulty level you have it set at. If you have walls near that area, it'll be easier to defend. Starting out, the first few raids tend to be smaller zombie hordes. As the game progresses though, it will become harder and harder to fight. In addition to your units, troops, you can build defenses within your walls. Having spikes, towers, and other defenses helps to ensure your victory. Snipers will help as well as they have long range and can shoot from further back. They also tend to one-shot smaller zombies so it can help with clearing up those hordes. Thank you for watching my tips and tricks video. I hope that these tips help you in clearing out those zombies and finding your way to victory. If you still find yourself struggling, hint. Follow tip number one and try lowering the difficulty. This helps a ton, especially if you're just trying to learn the game. As you get better, I recommend upping the difficulty to test your skills. They Are Billions is not an easy game, that's for sure. But with these tips, you'll be able to make it further than you had before. I want to thank you all for watching as it helps the channel out. If you'd like to continue to help the channel, make sure to leave a like on the video and comment below on whether you'd like to see more games like this or just what you learned from this video. I know, I say it a lot, but thank you once again. This is The Still Grizzly signing off and hoping you have the best of luck with all your future games.